Welcome everyone to this uh, third edition of Process Automation Live. We're happy to have you with us today to hear a little bit about what, what Chineka has done with process automation using a process automation platform. All right, so let me start first by introducing myself and then I'll introduce our guests and our uh, topic today. So my name is Mickey Ferrance and I work for Benita Soft. I'm in marketing and I'm responsible for content management. So I'm here today to interview and discuss what Shineka is doing with our guests. First, we have Federico Garayani from Chineka. Hello. And we have... Hello, Mickey. Hello. Hello, everybody. And we have Silvano Alorio, also from Hello, Chineka. Everybody. Hello, everybody. So before we go into detail about the projects, let me ask uh, Federico first to tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do at Chineka. Yes, I'm Federico Gallegani and uh, I'm a business analyst and consultant here at Chineka. Thank you. And Silvano, tell us who you are and what you do. Okay. Hello, I'm Silvano and uh, I work in the delivery department in uh, Chineka. Uh, I'm a team leader of an area in that department that is called finance. Um, in this area, we develop applications for uh, our customers and I coordinate a group of team, uh, um, a few teams of uh, analysts, developers, developers and uh, testers. Um, we develop uh, essentially uh, applications that uh, are legacy applications and uh, in, uh, in the last few years, uh, more and more than applications that are uh, deployed on the bus, like OpenShift. So what we have here with us today is two different visions of uh, process automation. We have the vision of our bus business analyst, wrong side, and the vision of our technical integrator. So we'll hear a little bit about both of those different points of view on some of the projects that Chineka has been working on. Um, before we go into detail on those, let me just uh, quickly summarize for everybody what the platform is. That's just to give a little bit of context to the technology that our guests are using. Uh, Bonita is a digital process automation platform, and it's composed of a number of different uh, modules, one would say. Uh, for example, there's a studio which is used to visually map out a process from end to end. And the studio also has in it access to integration tools. So other process uh, system information systems can be integrated into the application that's being built on Vanita. That application, once it's fully integrated, once it has added to it, the user interface for the human tasks inside the process, then that can be uh, deployed and delivered. The engine or Benita runtime is what drives the process that drives the, the application. And so that whole, the platform pro provides all of these pieces. And what we'll hear from our guests today is how they use the various pieces inside Bonita to create uh, an application using the engine and to create a fully uh, full application on the Bonita platform itself, a living application that uh, works from end to end. So that's a quick, uh, very quick overview of Bonita. I'll encourage you to go check out uh, more about what Bonita is and what it does on some of our other uh, videos and our other content on the website. But what we want to concentrate on today really is what these gentlemen have done with it. So first of all, I, I will ask uh, Federico if you would please tell us a little bit more about the Chineka Consortium and what it does for the universities that you guys work with. Can you explain that to our viewers? Yeah, sure, of course. Uh, Cineca is um, a university consortium in Italy and um, it's consisting of 70 universities and nine research centers and the uh, National Ministry for University and Research itself. Uh, all these are sitting uh, with the representative in our board of directors, so we are directly controlled uh, by university and, and the ministry. 
uh, Chineca provides a, a broad spectrum of services, of IT services, to the higher education or research system in Italy, uh, from supercomputing. Uh, as a matter of fact, we are, we are uh, one of the biggest high-performance computing center in Europe. Uh, our top machine, the Marconi 100, delivers 32 petaflops uh, of computing power. And beside that, we deliver um, some different services, uh, uh, infrastructure, application, and digital services to university. Uh, in particular, we support university in their administrative tasks, uh, like uh, student enrollment, student management, or HR management, accounting, uh, procurement, and uh, uh, all the tasks that uh, university personnel have to perform day by day. Uh, so, um, as uh, this is one of, of the, the main activities and the, the one that is related uh, to our use of Bonita Soft. So you, you Chineca handles administrative uh, applications for all of these different universities. Is that correct? Yes, and, that's correct. Yeah. And they can be very different from university to university since they're independent entities. Yes, there are um, there are different, and all university have the, their own um, freedom of organizations. So, as you can understand, every process can be slightly or not so slightly different from university to university. So, it's a big challenge to keep all the things together and deliver uh, un services and application for for everybody. So, you, you're you've got quite a bit of variety to manage there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we need flexibility for this reason. Okay, cool. So you're working with the universities in supporting their administrative, their very uh, diverse administrative processes. Um, what I would like to do with you guys now is have each of you explain what it was, a, a little bit about the, the projects that you worked on, each of you. First, by explaining uh, what it was that caused you to look for a process automation solution to begin with. In other words, what was the pain that you were experiencing that you were looking for a solution for? And then after you explain that, you can tell us uh, exactly what it was, the project that you worked on, and how it, how it worked, what you were doing with it, etc. And so we'll start with Silvano. If that's okay with you, Silvano, we'll start with you. Yeah. If you'll tell us a little bit about what was the, the issue you were facing, and then what did you do? Okay. As uh, Federico told you, um, one of the problems uh, in the development of application for uh, our customers, can be part of the universities, uh, is the, uh, the uh, regulation that may vary uh, in, the, in the single university. So, um, in my application, that is uh, a new procurement product, um, we want to uh, solve the problem to, uh, of uh, the flexibility that we uh, must to furnish to our uh, university to design the process, um, mainly for the authorization uh, part of, 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 of the problem, uh, in, in, a, in a way that could, could fit for, for everyone. So Bonita uh, uh, could give us uh, uh, this opportunity to have the, the flexibility that we want. So can you tell us a little bit about the processes that you put in place? Um, as I said, um, the, the, my, my project was to integrate Bonita as a, a REST API engine in, the, uh, in a procurement product. Uh, as you can see on the, on the slide, uh, there is the process that uh, is, I was uh, that I designed that is uh, um, too longer. <laughs> but um, <laughs> this, these are in, in reality uh, uh, five processing uh, because there is the process of the purchase request because uh, one of the problem of the um, of the university is to uh, make a request to uh, insert a request in in a system to uh, to buy uh, to to request some goods or services. So um, the the first one of the process is the the, the request that could could uh, uh, 
a professor uh, or a, a, an administrative person of the university could, could insert in the in the in the procurement product. Uh, after that, there there were there were some steps because the the request must be authorized, the request must be uh, fulfilled by other uh, other other actors. I can say because Bonita called this uh, this person actors, and uh, um, after that, after the authorization, after the fulfillment of the request, um, the request be became uh, in order so in the process there is the process in the, in the slide there is the process of the order because uh, it's quite different from from the the purchase request uh, the order could for example uh, must be um, sent to our do uh, documentation system so uh, there are actors that are authorized to send this order uh, to send this order to the documentation system uh, but our, our um, e procurement product uh, talks also with uh, um, a legacy application that I mentioned before uh, that is called UGOV that stands for university government and in particular with the, the accounting module because uh, every um, every document has uh, uh, an, effect, an effect on the, the accounting uh, the accounting module so you had to you had to integrate uh, this yeah. process with you with a legacy system. Did yes, also, also with a legacy system. And uh, how did you do that? I I did that with the, the connections that are uh, uh, available in uh, in Bonita software. Uh, because uh, there are variety, uh, several connectors, in particular uh, REST API connector or uh, um, SOAP. Uh, Sub connectors to make a, a sub request. <coughs> um, after that, uh, um, another kind of process is uh, uh, the, the delivery note because uh, when the order uh, was sent, sent to, to, uh, to, to, to the suppliers, uh, probably uh, some goods or services are provided. So uh, another document is the delivery note that finally. Uh, is sent to um, to the accounting module in uh, eGov, that is the, the, other, the other application, and uh, from that the, the, the process continues in uh, in, the, in that legacy application and, uh, with with the other other with other process. So uh, this is a, a, a deep dive of of this process uh, that I. I designed it in the in the in my in the application of that is called the procurement product. It seems somewhat typical in the sense that it's not a single process, but a process made up of a number of other sub processes. Did I understand yes. that? There's yes. quite a few. Yes. There's quite a few yes. independent every, processes happening. Yeah, every every document has its own process. Request and checks the order and then the delivery note. Okay. And did sorry to interrupt. Did I also understand that um, when you developed these processes together, that you were using the engine to drive existing? You had already existing interfaces to work with. Yes, because my application, the program product, is written in uh, Node.js, Angular, and Express. Uh, with MongoDB as a database, so we um, uh, we have developed the, the the interface and we use Bonita only for as a REST BPM, BPM engine. So the, the, the two systems talk with each other uh, to um, follow the, the process that uh, that is uh, designed. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Silvano. You're welcome. <laughs> let's let's uh, pose the similar question then to Federico about uh, what you did. I understand you did something a little bit different with Benita, where Silvana used the engine, you used the entire platform. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, your pain, the pain that you were facing that uh, drove you to look for a BPM solution, and then tell us about the solution you put in place. 
Yeah, sure. Um, yes, the solution was a little different from the one that described Silvano. Uh, the key problem was that uh, a big uh, university in northern Italy asked us to help him to help them to uh, digitize uh, a process that was performed mainly by email and documents as uh, we, we everybody knows that sometimes this process are carried on. Uh, there are a particular research projects inside the universities, the, the project that uh, involves animal experimentation that must undergo a very strict authorization process in order to uh, ensure that every possible precaution has been taken to grant animal welfare. So uh, this process is quite complex and involves uh, uh, the production of a lot of documents and uh, uh, different levels of authorizations. So uh, before uh, this uh, process, uh, this automation process uh, um, had been deployed, everything was performed exchanging mails and uh, uh, writing documents and uh, and so on. So uh, we developed a, a living application using Bonita. Uh, so uh, we designed the process um, uh, on, on university specifications and designed the interfaces uh, that uh, act as uh, contact point to the users and uh, completely automated its process. But now, uh, helps all the users that are researchers and professors inside the university to collect all the information, guide them to uh, collect the right information in the different point of the process, send all the documentation to uh, the committee that uh, is taking the first decision about the process, then uh, send to the second level to the, min the national ministry to uh, ask authorization. And uh, all this uh, information are also uh, delivered to the university documental repository. So there is an integration uh, with uh, an external uh, system that uh, has to receive the, the same documents. Uh, everything integrated uh, with the uh, single sign-on uh, system of the university so that every uh, user can uh, uh, um, start uh, a task, start a, a project or get inside the automated project using their normal credentials that use inside the university. Okay, so this is quite a different process and it, the int user interface was, I think you told me it was critical, uh, based on the user's demands? Yes, uh, actually we uh, started uh, with the idea to make some simple interfaces to collect documents, but th that was not the case because uh, we discovered that uh, business users inside the university need something a little more, uh, well, not sophisticated, but uh, very custom uh, with uh, every step uh, really, really uh, well defined and the user interface that uh, is designed on their own uh, needs. So, um, yes, we develop uh, a, a complete application with different um, user interfaces, uh, something to uh, start the project and collect documents and other interfaces to research uh, the different instances of the process that have been started and to um, query the system on the state of every single instance of process. Okay, thank you for that overview of what you did on your automation project. Let me ask you guys now uh, specifically about why Bonita was the right fit. Why did you choose it? And why Enterprise, why did you decide to go with Bonita Enterprise instead of using the Community Edition, for example? Um, Silvano, do you want to take that question? Okay, yes, sure. Um, we start with Bonita in uh, 2014. Um, in, that, in that period, we are uh, searching for a VPN solution. And um, we started with the POC uh, proof of concept. 
and uh, a few uh, BPM platform was analyzed. But uh, uh, from our point of view, Bonita was uh, um, the platform that could uh, fit for us uh, because uh, we, we several, uh, a few platforms uh, could um, be, could be integrated uh, through REST API. So uh, this is uh, uh, also a, a requirement that Bonita could uh, 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 Apply, okay, and um, we you, um, we choose we chose the um, um, enterprise edition because uh, essentially for two reasons. The first one of the, of the, is the support uh, because uh, there is a 24 hours uh, or seven days of, uh, um, support. But the, for me, the most important is the um, multi-tenancy uh, features because. Uh, we have uh, as a, as, a, uh, as a, I said uh, several universities so uh, we want one platform to um, to serve for all of our customers or all our universities so we don't want to to have one single platform for one single uh, for our single university so this is uh, the main the main, uh, the main uh, um, issue that we we want we wanted to solve uh, choosing Bonita. So this might be a specific. Excuse me, we have a little bit of a delay with the sound. Excuse me for Sorry. interrupting. Um, this this is something that's particularly perhaps uh, relevant to public service um, applications when you have multiple agencies, in your case, multiple universities, and you want to keep their data and their processes separate from one another, uh, multi-tenancy yeah. is, is a useful thing to have. Did yes. I understand yeah. that correctly? Yes, definitely. So um, let me ask you what you think, uh, what could you tell us a little bit about let me let me put it this way, uh, since I don't want to go too long, so I want to kind of bring things together, but I think it would be worth hearing each of you to give your opinion, your advice to our audience from your experience developing these projects. What would you advise somebody who's about to get started on a project, on a process automation? What would you advise for them? And uh, Silvano, I'll ask you first, and then Frederico, I'll ask you for your input. Okay. Uh, to me, the, the most important thing that we should be done before starting with uh, with the BPM is to to make a POC, like I said before, because uh, uh, it's very important to understand if uh, every uh, issue every problems that uh, we want to solve it uh, um, is uh, uh, is available to 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 to, to solve with the the, the, the the platform that we choose and uh, in this moment uh, i also have uh, as an advice to uh, choose a platform that is uh, uh, that could go on on the cloud platform because this is important now because when, when we started on 2014 uh, this is not uh, the the use case, but now uh, it's uh, it's very important to uh, to have a, a product that is that it could be deployable uh, on on the cloud. You're moving to the cloud. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So if flexibility to. matters. <laughs> yes. It. How about you, Federico? What would your advice be? Well. I, I would suggest in the first place to um, take some user research before start building uh, to try to understand the real needs. In first place, what are their actors? What are the users? What are their needs? And what kind of contact point they need in this process? Because uh, what the easiness that uh, Bonita offers to uh, construct a path a process can induct to start building without having understood uh, completely what is the problem and that would be a big issue uh, at the end when you realize that probably that was not just the case something was some a little different and you didn't consider uh, all the users 
and in second place not to um, uh, uh, dismiss the authentication and authorization problem so to understand how all the user would log into the process uh, how would they uh, what kind of credential and authorization would receive to access the the process the voice of experience <laughs> when i hear <laughs> this kind of detailed answers to this kind of question i hear experience in the background <laughs> my five cents <laughs> Um, what I will do now is have a look at the questions that we have in our um, in our chat box and uh, pose some questions uh, to finish up our session today. So let me uh, let me ask you this one. Ah, here's a good one. Um, do you feel and I'll uh, we'll see who wants to take it. Do you feel that it's important to have a full development team to implement? an automation project with Benita. Who would like to take that one? Silvano? Okay. Okay. Um, in my opinion, um, it would be better to have in, uh, in, the, in an organization a team that is uh, um, uh, started for the integration. integration. So uh, um, I think that uh, this team could be the, the, the the the, um, the people uh, um, to which uh, the, the, um, the other team could be uh, asked some questions about the, the integration and the, in this case for Banita in particular in uh, my my team uh, there is uh, the, the the competence the, the, um, about also for also for Bonita because in my experience uh, um, it's better to let the de developer um, uh, develop a functionality from the front end to the back end, so um, it, it could be better engaged in the, or committed in the, in the in the development if he sees he see everything of, of the functionality. Mm -hmm. This is my opinion. So it's important to have a full team, yeah. in your opinion. Yeah. Yes. I agree with Silvano, and uh, um, probably if not up. Full team, you need a structured team with different skills and competences, uh, not only analysts and not only technical people, but it's very it's very important to share requirements, analyze them, design the process, design the interfaces. So yes, a small, complete, all around team uh, would be would be preferred in my opinion. Maybe that's good career advice as well <laughs> for young developers. <laughs> Develop yeah, a yeah, good definitely. set of competence. Uh, a, a full set. Yeah, yeah. Anything that either of you would like to add before we close today? Yeah, no, just just to say that in my case, uh, at the end, it was a, a good experience, and was uh, we our project was successful, and the users are, are using this process that we are we are happy. And uh, the, now our our next step is to uh, trying to adapt what we have made with the university to other university and try to uh, export this experience and this process to other universities so to uh, make uh, available to different users or to uh, what, what we have made. Excellent. Well, I wish you good luck <laughs> as you continue to propagate <laughs> and build on what you've done. And thank you very much to both of you for spending your time with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And with, and with that, we'll end our webinar. Thank you, everyone uh, who attended today. Thank you for your questions. I'm sorry we didn't have time to get to all of them. But we appreciate that you're all here. Take care and goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. -bye. goodbye.